This is the concept video for probability. The idea is based off of having a variable that can take on outcomes from some random phenomenon. We'll call that variable x. Usually in, in, um, it's a capital letter, but for the most part I'll be using lowercase letters um, to stand for the variable. And now that variable gets the name called a random variable. Uh, there's different types of random variables. There's, uh, there's discrete random variables. Those are the ones that you probably looked at if you had a stack class that covered probability. Some of the uh, examples that you looked at there were considering uh, rolling a pair of dice or looking at different card outcomes that could come out. Well, that's a discrete random variable. In order to use calculus, what we need is a continuous random variable where the, the, out, the uh, outcomes that, that you get the, the random variable can take on any possible outcome whatsoever. With a discrete, you can only take on sort of integer values. Um, the, the dice can come up when you add them up. They can, they can add up to anything from, from 2 to 12, but, but, but must add up to some integer value. Well, um, in a continuous random variable, it's usually going to be measurements, uh, height or weight or age. You can get values that are in between the integer values, and so continuous random variables um, can are going to be the ones we use calculus for. With the idea of a continuous random variable comes along the idea of a probability density function. It'll be a function that helps you to to measure probability. Two things need to be true for you to have such a function. The function needs to be positive or equal to zero for all x on the real line and the total area over the entire real line under the curve should be equal to 1. And then the area then will correspond to the probability that x takes on values. Whenever you have a, a, um, a probability density function, you have a continuous random variable. So every continuous random variable has one and we use it to, to measure probability. The chance that x takes on values between a and b is found by integrating from a to b. Okay, let's take a look at an example. The function 2 over 27x times the quantity of x minus 1. This is a piecewise function where it's that only between 1 and 4 and it's 0 otherwise. Let's verify that this is a probability density function. Sometimes this gets abbreviated PDF, but people get confused with you know the PDF that you're used to from Adobe. But no, PDF will now mean probability density function. The graph of this function is a parabola between 1 and 4, and it is uh, 0 otherwise. I apologize about how this graph is drawn here. This y-axis really should be uh, here when x is 0. And so just ignore this here, sorry. So as long as you are between 1 and 4, the function takes on the parabola values. But um, if you're smaller than 1 or, or bigger than 4, the function is 0. So when it comes time to verify that it's a probability density function, the first thing we see is that the function is positive always. The function is either positive or, or equal to zero for every x, never dips below the y-axis, uh, never dips below the x-axis. And then to find the second property, we need to show that the total area is equal to one. Well, total area is really going to correspond from one to four, because it'll be zero area up to one, zero area after four. And so we really focus our attention from 1 to 4. Our function, pull out the constant, multiply in the x, we have x squared minus x. We take the antiderivative, x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. We put the 4 in, we get 64 over 3 minus 16 over 2, which is 8. We put the 1 in, 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2. And then we just evaluate this. Putting these two guys together, we get 63 over 3. That reduces to be 21. And then minus the 8, and then plus the half. 21 minus 
8 is 13. 13 and a half is 27 over 2. And if it's times 2 over 27, we get the total area is 1. So the two properties we need, total area 1 and always greater than or equal to 0, will show us that this guy is a probability density function. And it can be used to measure probability. We can verify, I mean, we can check this uh, chance that x takes on the value between 2 and 3. We can do this by integrating from 2 to 3. Finding the area under the curve between 2 and 3. Same kind of action happens. x multiplies out, gets x squared minus x. Antiderivative, x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. But now we're going from 2 to 3. Put a 3 in, you get 27 over 3, which is 9 minus 9 halves. You put a 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus 4 halves, which is 2. Um, you can put these guys together, 9 and 2, uh, to get your 11. Sorry, that looks pretty bad. Sorry about the chicken scratch. And then the, um, the minus the 9 halves and the, the minus the 8 thirds, common denominator will be 6. So we times this guy by 3, we times this guy by 2, times this 11 by 6. So we end up with 66 minus 27 from the 9 and the 3, minus 16 from the 8 and the 2, all over 6. And that'll be uh, 66 minus 16 is 50, 50 minus 27 is 23. We have 2 over 27. 23 over 6, these guys cancel to give you 23 over 81. I put it as a decimal here just to show you how we can interpret it. 28.4% of the total area is found in between 2 and 3. It's not drawn to scale, so it looks distorted. But, um, that's the chance that x takes on values between 2 and 3, whatever x might measure. We have a 28% chance of that. Okay, so that's another example of a probability density function. There'll be many others. Uh, there's a special one called the bell curve that you're familiar with, hopefully. Uh, we'll just show that at the end. Um, some other in interesting things we'll be want, uh, wanting to measure. Uh, what's the mean? Right, in stat class, you calculate the mean. You knew it meant to be the, the center. Well, now... For us, um, we'll call it the average value, or what we do is we multiply the, the x times the f of x, and we integrate that. We actually saw this before when we did center of mass. Um, and so we can find the mean. Um, the Greek letter here is called mu, the Greek letter mu, and it's the measurement of center. As long as you know the f of x, the probability density function, then you, you just integrate x times that. And it's the same kind of mean that you had back when you were using discrete probability, where you take the outcome times the probability. The same thing is, is here. On top of mean, you might be interested in the median. The median is your halfway point. You have 50% of the area to the left and 50% of the area to the right. If I give you a curve maybe like the one that we had, then um, the curve was zero, and then it became alive, and then it went back to zero. 50% um, of the area on one side, and 50% of the area on the other side, it's not drawn to scale here, but um, that number there, the cutoff there, is called the median. And you can get it two different ways. You can integrate from minus infinity up to m, or you can integrate from m to infinity. I like the m to infinity version of it. And what you do is you set that equal to a half, and you backtrack and you solve for the m. So we'll be doing that. Also, when you took a stat class, you're worried about variance, trying to measure spread. And what you did is you took your outcomes, you minus the average, and you squared to get the average distance kind of from the mean, multiplied by the probability. And what was bad about that measurement, it's called sigma squared here, what's bad about that measurement 
is that it it squares the units and so a more useful measurement of spread was called the standard deviation and we get that by taking the square root of the variance and so these are things that we can now measure with calculus as long as you have a continuous random variable then we can use calculus and probability together to help us measure things uh, lastly just to show you um, about the bell curve it's called the normal density function and uh, here's a, a, a particular one where actually it, it, there is a function that you'll be integrating okay of course um, as it stands by itself this isn't something that you're going to be able to integrate but you give me a mean and you give me a standard deviation I'll be able to give you a bell curve these are like parameters that go along with it in this graph that you see to your um, in front of you here the mean is is zero and the standard deviation is one this is your standard normal and uh, if you took a stat class and you had to look up table values they came from this particular function they were called z-scores and uh, well according to the formula on the left there this function f of x where sigma is 1 is 1 over the square root of 2 pi e so the negative x squared all over 2 okay and 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 you you looked up table values but you actually um, those table values come from integrating this particular function so anyway the bell curve come is a continuous random variable and not that you I would have you do this because most of the times you end up with integrals that you can't actually do but um, a calculator can do it for you and so um, just so you, you know this is this is uh, an example of, of such a probability density function that you that you come up and uh, as you come that you contact come to contact with